Welcome back to Ox Tools. I'm Tom. Okay, for all you virtual apprentices out there, today we're going to look at how you square up uh, blocks in the mill and uh, without a tool change and no special measuring gear. Um, and using only the bottom cutting surface of a uh, of an end mill or a fly cutter. This is all you need right here. So we can go from a, a block that's sawed on all, all sides to one that's uh, square in every direction uh, within pretty close limits. So uh, let's see what that seven step process is uh, for creating uh, blocks uh, uh, all day long. All right, let's get set up here. I decided I'm going to use the fly cutter because uh, it's a tool that's pretty much accessible to anybody. Um, if you don't have a fly cutter, it's a really nice tool to have and uh, you can cover broad areas uh, in a single pass and you can adjust your tool geometry for different materials. So it's just a handy single point cutting tool. So let's, let's get going here. First, uh, we're going to do all this work in the vise, and uh, what I'm going to do is just kind of get preset here. So I'm going to raise the, the table until I get kind of close to this. Probably, actually, that's pretty good right there. Probably, um, so that actually, you know what? I think I'm going to go just just a whisker lower. Okay, so I got a little bit of clearance between. You know, if this is up on the parallels, I got a little bit of room. Okay, and that's just kind of just rough setting okay now the next thing I'm gonna do is I have a quill uh, a quill readout on here so just out of habit I'm just gonna run this all the way down and touch the bottom of the vise gently and I'm gonna zero the quill readout so now the what the quill readout is reading is this space here so I can actually actually cut to a dimension um, or close to a dimension by just looking at the quill readout super handy okay all right, first step here is we're just going to pick a side to uh, to start on here, and these are all pretty scroungy here. And I think what I want to do is I want to go ahead and do one of the broad faces first. Okay, so fine. All right, what we're going to do is we're going to put that side against the vise. Well, what I'm going to do is put a piece of this is welding wire. I'm just going to put this down in the corner, and the idea is that it just raises that back corner up just a whisker and then I'm going to put a parallel in the front but the part's not going to be under the parallel. I'm going to set this rod and this is, <laughs> uh, I've been using this for years. This is the handle out of my tap wrench and uh, I've just been using it for this for this operation um, you know pretty much forever, right? Alright, so what I'm doing is I'm using it in the front to basically press average that rear surface against the vise and um, and push it up straight against that side so uh, anyway I'm not super fussy about uh, this particular cut um, other than I just want to get a nice cut on this surface here all right all right let's uh, get ready to cut Down just a little bit. Okay, you can see it's not quite cleaning up there, so I'll come back across. All right, so we got one uh, one face cut there. Let's go ahead and number them. And uh, that's always a good idea, just so you can keep track of stuff. Now, uh, now we got to start paying attention here. You can see that this edge is pretty scroungy, um, but we don't really care right now. What we want to do is establish a perpendicular side to that, which is what we're going to do next. So I'm going to use my little rod in there again, and now it's going to become more, more important. Drop, drop this in there, like so. Now you can use a you can use a ball too um, if you got really erratic stock and this one's just on a stick just to make it easier to position in there okay um, or you know some you can hold them like this and stick them in too but that's just what this is um, we'll probably use that a little later but let's let's keep going with this so the idea here now 
is this rod is tilting this on this back pivot here and pushing it up tight against that vice job okay that's really what I care about right now is, is I want to be up against that up against that vice jaw in a good way okay so now what we're doing is we're going to create our first perpendicular surface and what we'll do is we'll go check it and make sure that we're uh, doing what we think we're doing okay all right so Okay, so we're going to check uh, uh, perpendicularity between side one and side two that we just cut. And we're going to use uh, a squareness comparator here. And I'm just going to double check that it's still set at zero. Okay, which it is. And this is just a squareness reference here. Okay, so let's check our part. Make sure I'm still in the frame. All right, so it's pretty close. What is it? One thou? Half, half thou. Oops. All right, so we're about a half thou right between those two surfaces. So we're just gonna keep going and rotating this part around and we'll just check it each time and make sure that we're doing what we expect to be doing. Now, this is a really handy tool for this kind of stuff. Not totally necessary, but uh, um, it sure makes uh, checking your work a lot easier. And uh, this doubles as an indicator stand too, so uh, you'll see another one in a minute when we check um, parallelism, so. All right, so we've done one, we've done two. We got those pretty close. Um, let's do three, which is gonna be this next broad face which is going to be parallel with this one, okay? So, we're going to put a good edge against the vise. Open this up, a little bit like that. And I'm going to go on top of two parallels, and you'll see why in a second. Now, I still got a rough, a rough clamping face, but uh, we're going to be okay, because you'll see what I'm going to do here. I'm going to set the parallels. I'm going to back up, okay, so I'm sitting down on the parallels and I'm going to use this little, the little uh, ball leveler thingy, I don't, yeah, I don't know what people call these actually, and I'm going to set it kind of low, and the idea is that it's going to press this up against this back jaw evenly and down against the, uh, uh, the parallels, so let's clamp it down a little bit, and I'm going to tap this one down and set it down. Without hitting myself in the finger. So what I want to do is check the back parallel and check the front parallel, and they're both tight, and that's what I'm looking for, okay? Now you can do this on the floor of the vise, but you, you put pieces of paper underneath each corner and you just tug on the paper to see if, uh, if you're sitting down on all four points, which is important, okay? So now we'll just take a little skim cut on that little monkey. Come down. Touch off, back up, drop down a, a whisker, and punch it. All right, so we got side three, which is parallel to side one. Oops, watch out there, Mr. Wizard. Let's get this set here. This is the only indicator that that photographs well. All right. Okay, so half thou, something like that. Let's do the rest. Okay, so we've got uh, uh, two, two parallel sides and two perpendicular sides. So we're just gonna go right in the bottom of the vise on this one here. And remember that we set this off of the bottom of the vise, so now I can actually go for dimension um, as well. Um, so, 
let's just clamp that in there. We're going to take a skim cut off of that. And I'm going to tap this one down too. And that feels rock solid, which is what you're, you know, you use your ears and uh, the vibration of the hammer to kind of tell if it's sitting down properly too. So, all right. Come down a little bit. Uh, you know what? I'm going to take a little more because that way I don't have to <laughs> take multiple passes. So. Check the side we just did there. So it's just a good idea to, to check them all as you're going around. That way you don't go too far wrong if you're, oops, if you're uh, keeping track of it. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that. What's less than a half a thou. We'll just call it a half a thou. All right, so now now comes the fun part. Um, and this is where the, the magic happens when we do these end surfaces here. Because now we've got parallelism and perpendicularity in this direction, but now we gotta do it this way. So how do we do that? Because we got no good reference surfaces and what we wanna do is we wanna establish uh, perpendicularity to these these faces as well in a, in a different direction. So let's go see how we're going to do that. There's a couple ways we can do that. All right, so we've got four sides that are in pretty good shape here. And now we need to do these end surfaces. So there's several ways you can do it, but I'm going to show you the, the cool way, okay? So all the cool cats do it this way. Um, you know, you could hang it out of the side and you could use a long end mill on that. To me, that's a tool change. I'm not interested in that. Um, what we need to do is we need to set it up this way. But what we need to do is we also need to set it up square this way. And I told you up front that we're not going to use any special measuring tools. Uh, and we don't need any special measuring tools to make this side perpendicular to these four sides here in two directions, by the way, okay? And I'm gonna show you how we can do that. So I'm gonna show you the way that we're not gonna use, but it's actually a cool way to do it. And that is, you can use a V-block, okay? Now, that, to me, this is cheating a little bit, all right? So we would stick the V-block in there like that, and then you would put two sides against there at once, okay? And I'm just gonna clamp it gently so you can see. And these are up against the V, and so now we're square with the world, and we can dust that off, and, and all is good, okay? <sighs> it's boring. I don't like that one. So we're going to do the clever way. So let's set that aside. What we're going to do is we're going to take a cut in this direction. Let's see, where are we here? One. Oh, let's just do this end here. Okay, let's just do this in. So we're going to turn it 90 degrees. All right. And I'm going to show you something. And to demonstrate this, I'm going to purposely tilt this a little bit in the vise, okay? So that it is clearly out of square, okay? And I'm going to clamp it nice, okay? And to, to prove it's out of square, I'm just going to put this up here so you guys can see it. So it's massively out of square, right? Would everybody agree? Yes, everybody agrees. Okay. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take a cut. All right. And we're going to cut in a different direction. Um, yeah, I think I wanted to cut about halfway. I'm going to touch right there. Back up. All right, make sure I'm plant. And you can see, a, wow, yeah, we're going to have to take a couple passes on that. Now, I don't need to clean up the entire surface. I'm just going to come down a bit. Let's do a little more. Okay. 
And I think I'm gonna take one more real light one. So here's what's magic about this. So even though we cut this at an angle, okay, and you saw the angle that we leaned it over, this edge is perpendicular, okay? And there it is. That edge is perpendicular. And that's what we care about in this case. All we need is an edge to establish the opposite side. So even by cutting that off at an angle, because this is perpendicular to this, we've created a straight edge, okay? Or perpendicular edge, I should say, okay? And it looks good from here, looking at that. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that out. Now, you gotta be careful. You don't wanna deburr that, okay, uh, heavily, right? Uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go over on the surface plate just to take any fuzz off of that. I'm just gonna put it on a little paper in both directions and then that's it. Uh, I'm not going to deburr that edge, okay? So let's, I'm going to go do that and I'll be right back. All right, so I papered that edge and now we're going to label this. So this is cut five, but it's also going to be cut seven, okay? And now let's, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to rotate that around and we're going to put our square edge against here, okay? And in this case, I think I'm going to I'm going to prop that up off of the bottom on my little rod there, okay, like so. What's it catching on? It's catching on something. Oh, I need to go higher. <laughs> I put too much angle in it, so my this rod's not big enough. <laughs> All right, well, let's... Uh, Let's just use a parallel then. Do that. Okay, so our nice square edge is sitting on that parallel. How do you like that, huh? That's pretty cool, huh? Just gonna gently put it in there. Parallel snug. So now I can do this surface here, and it's perpendicular and perpendicular with that edge, and then we just recut the opposite side to finish the job. So let's do that. All right, so there's side six that we uh, we just cut, there's our funky five, five, seven side. So we're gonna put this side down. Let's check our uh, comparator, make sure we're, uh, we're still zeroed. Looks pretty good. Let's go against here. Make sure I'm in the frame. And, oops, it's pretty tasty. Okay, so, and now you can see that we just need to recut this surface until it cleans up and then we can bring it to dimension as well, okay? So five seven now uh, becomes seven um, and uh, we, go to, we go to size between these, si with these two faces. So uh, let's, go, let's go finish this little monkey off. Okay, so side six goes down. Make sure I'm, in, uh, I'm spanning the uh, the little step in the bottom of the Kurt Vice. All right, snug it up, and then this one I'm going to tap down as well. All right, and I'm feeling it for that nice solid. Uh, you know, feels like it's in column there. Okay, and then we're just going to recut this guy. And once again, we're sitting in the bottom of the vise, so we can use our our quill as a dimensional, uh, we can measure directly now. I'm gonna drop down. All right, take a couple of passes. All 
All right, there you have it. The seven step um, method for squaring up blocks. Okay, and you saw we just used some real simple stuff here that uh, uh, pretty much anybody has access to. Um, so some things to note, it, it works best on uh, kind of blocky pieces like this that are kind of squarish. If you get into narrow plates and stuff like that um, with, you know, differential aspect ratios that are high, um, it doesn't work as well. So it's kind of for chunky blocky parts like this. But, uh, you know, once you kind of get the hang of it, you can, you can motor through a, a pile of these pretty quick. And, um, and do a really nice job of it, okay? And um, um, it's a great technique. Uh, it reinforces uh, uh, good vice work uh, where you're clamping and uh, checking parallels and um, seating things properly in the vice. It just reinforces all that stuff and, uh, and develops those really good habits. So try it out and, and uh, see what you think. So anyway, thanks for watching and see you later.